Shalom and Bruchim Abayim to another program of Pnine Torah when we get together right before the Shabbat to study Parashat HaShavuah. Like I gotta say, I was excited to have one guest here today, but today <laughs> I have two guests, and I must say, two of my most favorite people in the entire world are here. Really, honestly, Ooh. I say that. <laughs> uh, people who I love to study the Torah with because guess what? I always learn something new from this guy here and this guy here. First, I want to introduce uh, my good friend, Re uh, Rabbi, Rabbi <laughs> Yosef Rachamim Danieli, also known as, to those who are very close to him, as Rami Danieli, from all the way from the Galil. It's so wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful so to be great. Here. Because I know that studying the Torah with you is like a roller coaster. <laughs> but this roller coaster going up and down, up and down in the trail. And if you ever sat with Rami and studied the Torah with Rami, you know it's a roller coaster with Rami. You're going to get the thrill and the excitement and the <laughs> tears, and then there will be joy. And that's what we're looking for today to uncovering Mashiach in the Torah portion. So welcome, mm -hmm. Rami, all the way from Zion. I encourage you, visit Rami. Visit his website. He's my favorite also tour guide in, in the Eretz Israel. So I, I just love, uh, I, I love your work and your ministry. And we're a big fan of, Thank of, you. of you. And here I have our own uh, from Yeshiva Chuvu, my other favorite rabbi, Rabbi Steve Bernstein. It's so great to have you, Rabbi Steve. Rabbi Steve lead a congregation in Florida. Visit them in Florida. Just uh, uh, truly, those who are in the Arya Shiva know what a phenomenal teacher Steve is. So, Haverim, I want to start with you. I want to get to business. I want to talk <laughs> about the Torah portion this week. This Torah <coughs> portion, Parashat Mishpatim, is a jam-packed because you get a little bit from everything. And, you know, we're talking about roller coaster. It's kind of ending with a bang, this Torah portion. It's ending up with Moshe, chapter 24, Moshe on Mount Sinai. I would like to, Rami, to ask you, first of all, do you see Messiah? Is it true to say, there's a passage in the Sanhedrin 99, that says, all the words of the prophets has been given us so that we will know the days of Mashiach, so we know who Mashiach is. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Oh, absolutely. Do you see Mashiach in this Torah I portion? I see Mashiach everywhere. <laughs> well, there is going to be some controversies in this Torah portion, I'm sure, because you have three Jews here, you're going to have five opinions. Six, but six. Six <laughs> opinions. <laughs> but we want to dive in to, to Exodus. If you have your Tanakh, we're going to do Hebrew or English. You can kind of follow. We're going to read in Hebrew, but we, we are uh, going to look at the English as well. It's neither, but Hebrew is going to be our main text. We are in uh, Exodus or Shemot, chapter 24, and that is a climatic event to finish this Torah portion here, Moshe on Mount Sinai. And I want us to maybe walk through this. Maybe we start and and read the first four verses, uh, Rami, and then let's let's kind of discuss this thing. You would like me to read yeah, it in Hebrew? Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Shmot Kafdalet Achad. Ve'el Moshe Amar. Ale El Hadonai. Ata ve'aharon, Nadav ve'avihu. ושבעים מזקני ישראל והשתחוויתם מרחוק. וניגש משה לבדו אל אדוני, והם לא ייגשו, והעם לא יעלו עמו. ויבוא משה ויספר לעם את כל דברי אדוני, ואת כל המשפטים. ויען כל העם, כל אחד, ויאמרו, כל הדברים אשר דיבר אדוני נעשה. ויכתוב משה את כל דברי אדוני, וישכם בבוקר, ויבן מזבח תחת ההר, ושתים עשרה מצבה, לשניהם עשר שבטי ישראל. Let's stop רגע, let's stop, this is already a year full for us. Can you give us, both of you, a picture of what you are seeing in those verses. The one thing that strikes me in those verses in the children of Israel is the fact that it started the Torah portion called Parashat Mishpatim. Mm -hmm. And here it says again the term Kol HaMishpatim. Okay, mm -hmm. there is some sort of a connection between the Mishpatim at the beginning of the portion mm -hmm. to the Mishpatim that we are seeing once. Mm -hmm. So perhaps for the sake of our audience, let's let's first define something. 
what is mishpatim? How do you understand the term mishpatim? What is a mishpatim? Well, there's three different kinds of commandments in Torah. Okay. You've got uh, mishpatim, not only mishpatim, but mitzvot and chukim. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you look, a mitzvah is something fairly simple, uh, like the mitzvah, the tzitzit. Uh, Hashem tells us where the tzitzit, and then he tells us why. Okay. So that you will see them and remember all of the commandments. Okay. Okay, so that's what a mitzvah is. A chukah is something a little different. It's where Hashem says, do it. And he doesn't tell us why. Okay. He just says, do it. So we just do it. Like Nike, just do it. Just do it. And then, um, a mishpat is between people. Okay. It is a, a, a commandment that if this happens between people, that this is what is supposed to happen from there. And this is really the beginning of the parsha itself. And then, as uh, Rav Zachi said, comes up again right here. So, so let yeah. me ask you a question. That's a great point. So mishpatim, the way we understand mishpatim, is have to do with ve'ahavta l'recha kamocha. Exactly. A relationship. A relationship. Exactly. Relational, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have here... The story of Mount Sinai, okay, mm-hmm. uh, retelling, recounting the story of Mount Sinai, a climatic, some would say the most climatic thing in Jewish history. Mm-hmm. What is the connection between, I would call, Avat Israel or a relationship between our interpersonal relation, between our interpersonal relationship to the coming of the Geula, because to me, this is a prophetic picture of the Geula, that, is, that the redemption is, 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 yeah. is coming. So what do, you, what do you see in this? Well, we need, we need to understand that uh, in Judaism, yeah, there is this uh, approach which is biblically based, yes. that we should assure the coming of Messiah. We should, so, so, by our very behavior. And, but let me explain something. Mishpatim, he said, very, he described it very nice, the yeah. division into three major, majorly three segments or, yeah, of mitzvot, of mishpatim, of God's word, yeah, God's Torah. But mishpat, you know, in Hebrew, mishpat yeah. is a sentence, yeah. but mishpat is also court, bet mishpat, yeah. house of mishpat. What is house, house of sentence? It's also God's sentence, God's verdict, you know, so you will stand before God for mishpat, in his bet mishpat, in his courthouse. Uh, interesting. And the most important thing for God is in this bet mishpat, in this courthouse, is not how we related even to him, but how we related to each other. Amazing. Tzedek, That's justice. Amazing. Exactly. And mishpat means also judgment or tzedek, righteousness. Yeah, interesting. You know? So are you... Are and by the way, in other words, sorry, shofet comes from judge. the same. Shofet, shofet mishpat. Right. And the shofet, the great judge, is interested in us relating to one another in righteousness. Otherwise, we can say till tomorrow that we believe in God Almighty. But if we disrespect, if you despise our neighbor... Bye bye. <laughs> so, are you suggesting <coughs> putting now in the, the good definition? It says here in Hebrew, "Vayavo Moshe Vayasaper Lam et Kol Divra Adonai et Kol Amishpati." Do you? And then the um, the people will sp- respond in one voice, and they say, "We were going to do all those things." Are you? What exactly? I guess the question in my mind: What exactly Moses told them? I guess that's a question <laughs> to ask. You open a Pandora box in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but I think that that's a very important thing to ask. What yeah. exactly? Especially in light of yeah. the word call. Yeah. Oh, oh. In verse 4. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I guess the question is, because it, it, it's continue on, right? And it says, and Moses wrote at all of those things. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the question asked, and this is a controversy, especially among Messianic, if Moses wrote Everything. Do we have such a thing as a oral law? Torah Shebaal Peh. Mm-hmm. What we call Torah Shebaal Peh. We know the answer from Pirkei Avot, at the of the Father, chapter 1, verse 4. Yeah. They, they mm-hmm. would say yes. And I would like to hear from you your thoughts. I, I, and I'll tell you my thoughts in a second. But Steve, we'll, we'll start with you, Rabbi Steve. What, the, what are your thoughts on this? Okay. But just looking at the sentence, Vayichtov Moshe, it called Divrei Hashem. You cannot isolate this or any sentence of Torah by itself. Because if you just read that part of the sentence, what you come up with is an idea that every word that was ever written 
written by by God came through Moses, yeah. and we know this is not true, true. right? True. Uh, Hashem spoke to the prophets, and he, he came as Yeshua Mashiach, and so not every word that was ever spoken by. Okay, so okay, this leaves room for Torah Shabbat. Okay, what do you, what well, is? I would disagree. That's, that's not a great thing about <laughs> this, but this is good. I would love to hear your thoughts. Not complete disagreement, you know, because I'm not against Torah Shebaal Peh, Toshba. I'm really not against it, but I think that we need to differentiate what is from God. I believe that, unlike with the Torah, with the written Torah, and the prophets, the Tanakh, and the Brit Chadasha, yeah, uh, which everything is really... Um, committing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are committed to follow. I don't believe that all the Torah Shabbal Peh or all the Horah Law is divine, divinely inspired. That's my. But let me tell you why I disagree with you on this point, because you made it like sound that uh, chapter uh, that uh, Exodus uh, 34, where we are now, verse four, it speaks about all the words of God. In the context, it's all the words of God which were given on Mount Sinai. Yeah. See, in the context, it does not include yet, prophets were not yet there. And the Ketuvim, the writings were not there, you know, Proverbs, yeah. and the, okay. they were not yet there. So we should not leave the word call all out of context. And in the context, it is the Torah. It is what Moses got so far when he had the revelation no, on Mount Sinai. I agree completely. But the idea is that there's more. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did not finish. And that's yeah. what I was trying yeah, to Let yeah, me yeah. develop it, Rabbi, because now I will tell you why I, I don't disagree completely, okay? I, I left a little, not, not, not to be politically correct, I'm not, I'm not no, known. They, 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 I'm not known as a politically correct person, okay? <laughs> but let me tell you, I think every one of us develops, even within a family relationship, hidden codes, Torah Shebaal Peh, within our family. Absolutely. In Christian, Christianity is filled with Torah Shebaal Peh, with Horah Law. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? How we sure. should pray, how we do, you know, codes, yeah? Uh, we... The Talmudim had ex Torah Shebaal Peh, exactly. without a doubt. And they brought it with them inside in the inspired world of God. Yeah, of course. So, the Torah Shebaal, nothing is bad in the Torah, in, in the in the oral law, which is actually set of interpretations, attitudes, approaches, nothing is wrong unless you contradict the written word. Right. This is my only condition. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that the Torah Shabal Peh, what our Jewish sages, our dear, respected Jewish sages, and we I believe we respect them here, of course. at least in this form, yeah. yeah? I know other circles who do not respect yeah. them, and I disagree with them completely. This is our heritage. I see my heritage as the Jewish sages much more, actually. I don't see the Church Fathers as my heritage. Mm -hmm. So sorry to disappoint whoever watching us. That's yeah, great I, to me. My, my, my heritage is the Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim, Tanakh, Brit Chadasha, yeah? And the disciples. And yeah. the Chazam. Exactly, and, and the Jewish sages, but with one exception. Whenever the Jewish, I am courageous enough and humble enough, it sounds contradicting, but not. I'm courageous and humbly enough to say, no, I do disagree with, the, with this and that in the Jewish oral law. And say, sorry, and, by the way, within the this Torah. Is, this is absolutely no, normal. Within, oh, within the Torah, yes. Shebel Peh, there are arguments. Not no, of a, course. The rabbis, you know, two rabbis, 2,000 opinions. Yeah, so, abs absolu absolutely right. But and, the, and, and extending on all through the, the, the uh, 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 sages of Israel, right? The Ramban disagrees with Rashi. Exactly. And the Rashi disagrees, yeah. So, so we, we establish this. The, 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 there is such a thing as oral mm -hmm. law and oral tradition. Nobody mm -hmm. can, can deny that. Mm -hmm. The one thing we have to be uh, careful is is the way we use it, in essence, and the way we view it. Or whatever we accept. Oh. And this, and don't accept. And, 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 there, and there's no question that Torah, Nevi, Ketuvim, the written scripture, the Brit Chadasha, mm -hmm. the Besorah, mm -hmm. Ketuvei Shlichim, 
These are on a different level. Yeah, exactly. No doubt, no doubt. These, are, these are the things exactly. that were handed more or less directly from, from Hashem. Divinely. And then And then after that, now we're discussing them. Y- yeah. And this is the Torah about it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, it's interesting. When Chazal said, and I want people to get appreciation, <coughs> when they said the real study of Torah is, is, is Torah Shebel Peh, they don't say it because they disrespect the Torah of Moses. I don't know any Orthodox rabbi mm-hmm. who will say, no, I, I agree. I, I, there's anybody greater than Moses. They revere Moses, you know. In mm-hmm. essence, they say, they say we are so interested that it's not about really, it's about coming to the right conclusion. Exactly. That's why it's of a higher merit, because we are so the right interpretation. The exactly. right interpretation. So in essence, there is a merit there is a value in finding the wrong interpretation. And what I'm trying to say to our audience, you know what we're doing here now? That's also Torah Shabbat Peh. Of course. This is yeah. a Torah Shabbat Peh because you give your perush and you give your perush and I give my perush. So there is nothing wrong with the Torah Shabbat Peh. But so now we interpret that. Uh, my question to you, do you understand, it's kind of coming to the, to the idea of a mishpat. Mm. Obviously, everybody who who know about the Torah, know that, that when Israel received the Torah, it's called Matan Torah. Hashem is marrying Israel. You know, it's, it's, it's a picture of a bride and a groom. But are you suggesting, coming back to your point before, because it's giving them Mishpatim. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking about this completely different. Mm-hmm. Because Mishpatim to me also sound like a verdict. Mm-hmm. And a judgment mm-hmm. in some level. Mm-hmm. So should we think about Matan Torah as a marriage? Or should we think about is as a judgment? Perhaps we're looking at that all the wrong way. So I just wanted to, to, to hear a little bit from you because you started on this word Mishpatim. Mm-hmm. The question is, what's the content of the Mishpatim here? You know, I don't fully yeah. know, because I do believe when he says it's kol mishpatim, mm-hmm. I do believe there was some oral things that Moshe, Moshe told him. Although he wrote, you know, but there is something about the accent marks, you know. When he said, maybe when he said he write, he wrote the essence. He wrote the essence, the spirit. Mm-hmm. But we don't know the fine print and the fine detail of every word the way Moshe said it. I don't mm-hmm. believe it. We know what God wanted us to know. We know what God wanted us to mm-hmm. know. But, uh, you know, none of us were there. That's what I'm trying to say. The one thing that we don't get is the accent mark. Is this a good mishpat? The mishpat, you know, the mishpat of... The, the, there's an interesting passage in the Midrash that talk about the Midrash, uh, on, on the mishpat, in the term of your geula. Okay, so when I think this is my interpretation, this entire passage is a shadow. It's a shadow of the future Geula to come. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so I don't view it as that Mishpat. When I think about Mishpat in modern Hebrew, I think about a death penalty or death sentence or something negative. Yeah. I view it in a very positive way. Yeah, that's but, true. But I want to hear from you. Do you view the Mishpat here, I guess, is a positive or a negative? That would be one, one way before we, we proceed. Yeah, like, you... like a good Jew, I will tell you both. both? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. Of course. Both. <laughs> because when God. <laughs> God reveals himself on Mount Sinai, like you mentioned it, there was no, in the history of our people, the Jewish people, there was no, no such an event. Yeah, I mean, Mount Sinai, the, the Mount Sinai event. And God says, clearly, when the people start to be afraid, and oh, they, uh, yeah. Moses, go, you know, go and mediate between us and this terrible God, yeah? Yes. I mean, terrible and awesome. In his yes, own, yes, no, not, yes, yes, yes. Not yes. a bad God, God forbid, sure. yeah? But... Uh, Elohim Nora, yeah, that's yeah. what I meant, yeah, in Hebrew. Uh, God t- uh, Moses tells him, he calms them down, he says, don't worry. He's not against you. I, I'm paraphrasing yeah. it with my bad English now. Yeah. Don't worry, he did not come to kill you. He did not come to be against you. But he came in, this, uh, in such a way, such a terrible way, so you will fear him. Mm. And when you go to Mishpat, you need to know whom you are standing before. Da. And that's, that's actually, and that, he is the Shofet, he's not only the little daddy, ah, like in, um, maybe in Christianity, you know, in the modern Christianity, Western, yeah. so, you know, so when, only the God of grace. God has two sides. He's a very severe judge, but also, if you go according to his judgments, 
Come, come to my lap. Same so, so now you're appealing something to me very significant. You know, this this passage, you now you're standing in front of, it's in Masechet Barachot. It's, it's in Tracted Barachot. He it said, it's dealing with the, <coughs> the word Da'at. That's mm. really what it is. What does it mean to know Hashem? So my question to you, perhaps the way we need to look at this Mishpat, we already know that wherever there is a Mishpat, because he's giving the Mishpatim, there is a Shofet. Okay? Exactly. But if there is a Shofet, if I'm standing in front of a Shofet, you know, I think on a very negative... It's an, it's have a negative connotation to stand in front of a judge. I got what I did. I got a speeding ticket. What did I do? But perhaps the way, the reason we're standing, I, I want to ask you why. Maybe the question we need to ask, why we're standing in front of a chauffeur to mm-hmm. begin with? Mm-hmm. Is it because we did something bad? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think it's because the word that is, as you said, it's because God says, you're standing in front of the judge so that you can get to know the judge. Amen. Yeah, and, this and there's is, a difference. It's not for is, fear. Yeah, and this is, in my, if I may, it is proven what you just said in the first verse, you know. Uh, <laughs> Come up to the Lord, mm-hmm. you and Aaron, Nadav, etc., etc. He wants us, actually, all the Torah, you know, Shaul HaShaliach, Shaul, Rabbi Shaul, told us that the Torah tutors us, the Torah brings us, leads us to whom? To Messiah. Yeah. You know, who is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God? He, st- he sits at the right hand of the Father. And He calls you, He calls you up to Him. And He calls us as believers now to come, to... To come to approach him to eat and drink soon we will see it yeah. before him. Yeah. So the knowing the that, by the intimate that, you know, like men and yes, wife, yes, are yes, knowing each other, yes, that's the intimacy that God is calling us to. He actually wants to be our father, but he says to us that there are some conditions, and if if I may, the conditions have to do with the blood of the covenant. The next few verses. Yeah, we're getting there, but I want before the varacher. Please. <laughs> when we look at these, and these are judgments, and Hashem is bringing us judgments, and the judgments are between man and his neighbor, right? So if we look at all of the mitzvot, that the mitzvot are between us and God, and between us and each other. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what, what's being spoken of here is between us and each other. Yes. This is really a picture of the work of Messiah. Mm-hmm. If we pay attention, because when Yeshua HaMashiach came to us, the big problem that he was constantly hammering us with is between us and each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That we were treating each other badly, to the point where he said, he told us, the temple will be destroyed because of Sinat <laughs> And this is the judgment side of the judgments that's being spoken of here. So, so let, me, let me recap something here, and I would like to see if you are in agreement. In the verse you just quoted, where it's looking here again about this verse in Mishpatim, he says, mm-hmm. The word Rachok, Chazal says, is not talking about distance or physical. There is a remez in the Hebrew language. The word Rachok talking about a spiritual separation. separation, some sort of separation. In the <laughs> end, that's right. But mm-hmm. in the end, they're dining him. So they're starting, the 70 elders are far from no. him. They're end, ending in closes. So could it be, perhaps when we talk about the blood and the covenant and all of those things, at the end of the day, could we look at the relationship with our even own personal geula in such a way that when we, and I'm, I'm, I'm using this generically, but people ask the one question all the time. I'm a Torah observer, and I observe Torah. Blah, blah. Can one observe Torah without having, quote unquote, mishpatim, the, the proper mishpatim, when I'm sorry, with the, relationship. His bra- the relationship with his brother. Isn't that the essence of Torah? The essence Our of Torah rela- is ve'avta l'rachakamocha. So here we're seeing that God says, if you want geula, you cannot have geula without ve'avta l'rachakamocha. Yeah, you're going to need the blood. But listen, before they get the blood, I'm just going to suggest to you something. Before they receive the blood, the reason that Moshe is reading them the word, because it says that faith is going to come by hearing. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. wants to soften their heart. Mm-hmm. 
the Mount Sinai experience is very much a heart issue as it is a covenantial issue. Of course, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. it's, it's very much so. So with that being said, I would like to continue with you guys. Uh, Rami, let's uh, pick up with the Hebrew and we will continue in, I believe, verse 5. Mm-hmm. 24. Yeah. Let's stop there. This is dramatic, some of the most dramatic uh, verses in the entire book of Shemot, in my opinion. I can only imagine even the sprinkling of the Mm -hmm. blood. Let me first of, of all ask you this question. When he took the Sefer Abrit. Mm-hmm. What, se- what is Sefer Abrit that he's talking about? Let's, let's define it. This is a very important question. What Moshe actually read them at this point? Yes. It's a wonderful question. Are you actually asking me first? Both of you. I would love mm-hmm. to hear from both right. of you because that's a mystery. It's a, you, you need to, and you know, the Hebrew language, both yes. of you know, uh, that Sefer comes from Lispo, to count. Yeah. And the uh, Sefer does not, in the, in the Bible at least, Sefer is not, not always in the, in the sense of holding a book, a book like this. Right. It can be also one page. Okay. Sefer can be a, a letter. Okay? Okay. He didn't uh, send can be thousand an, pages. Se- Sefer can be an epistle. Exactly. No, no, but, but it can be also one page, because yeah. it's spore it it's yeah. to count the letters, yeah, yes. and the words, okay? So, in my humble opinion, yes. each covenant is the means and the framework. Okay. The means is <clears throat> the, the blood, the giving the mishpatim, the blood, the spring of the... Ma- uh, the Sefer is the, the framework, okay? Okay. Or you can see, you can, you know, I like to, to always uh, give the, um, this comparison, okay, the following comparison. Yeshua spoke his word, gave the Mishpatim, he went on a mountain, Mount <laughs> Beatitudes, yeah? He gave all the interpretation, the best interpretation ever given to the Torah. By the way, to the Va'afta Racha. Kamocha, because most of Yeshua's talking in those three famous chapters, Matthew, Matitya, five, six, and seven, most of them are talking about exactly about mishpatim, and he gave the exposition about mishpatim. about uh, no, no, about God's word, about the Ten Commandments, or five of them at least, yeah. Yes, the horizontal, horizontal. Yeah, but yeah, but this was leading later on. This was the mount, like compared to Mount Sinai. He goes up to a mountain. He gives his interpretation. Moses goes up on a mountain. He just repeats what nothing is new under the sun. But later on, when Moses comes and he wants to, to stamp the covenant, which was just cut, he needs to sprinkle the blood. That's what Yeshua does on another mountain, Mount Golgotha. So he gives the framework. He gives the means, which is by his blood. Moses gives the framework, Mount Sinai, the Sefer, the book, the Ten, the, the written word on, on tablets of stones, where Yeshua will later on put it on tablets of flesh. So you're saying this is a preparatory of the Geula, the future Geula? There is the picture of what Yeshua will do about 1400 years after, yes. after this event. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful rehearsal. Rehearsal. That's mm-hmm. a great way to look at that. Steve, do you have anything to add on Sefer Abrit? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm, uh, I think that's really beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, but so we, we focus on the Brit part rather than the Sefer. Uh, t- uh, t- the Sefer the, the is the framework. Yeah. Okay, but in, for a Brit, there is one side does one mm-hmm. thing, one side does the other thing. 
Right? And then there's the consequences are laid out. Mm -hmm. If you do this, then I will do this. Mm -hmm. So within the framework that, you, that we're talking about are all of the elements of the breed mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And indeed, as we fast forward to Yeshua at Golgotha, we indeed find the same thing, okay? Yeah. In that within our master, we have all of the consequences mm -hmm. of all of the things that we have done that violate the covenant. Mm -hmm. And so his blood must be spilled. That's good. So yeah, he's taking, so you're saying really the Sephira Brit is a prophetic picture of, of the framework that is structured for us. Okay? The framework, if you wish, if I may add, yeah. there are the ten. I, all the Torah is based, Mahmat Sinai, I mean uh, yeah. Sinai, is based on the ten words, ten dvarim, ten commandments. The Sefer it's my humble opinion, okay, you don't need to accept anything I say, but in my humble opinion, the Sefer is the interpretation, including the Mishpatim, of the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments is the interpretation of the two. Wonderful. That, or you could say that the Ten Commandments can be summed up in by two, and the two can be summed up by Rabbi Shaul to one. To one. The after the Rakamocha. So, but this, so the Sefer is the large interpretation of Isgeret, but the, it all points to the Ten, which point to the two, which point to the to one. one. Interesting. That's very, very good. Now, the interesting thing here, they continue on. Okay, before we continue, he's taking it, he can't, he can't suffer a bit, and I want to, to zoom in on this thing. Again, they're hearing the word again. They just heard the word a minute ago. Mm -hmm. The question, in my mind, I would like to hear your insight. Why does he tell him the word again? They just told him the word. Why is he repeating himself? What is the purpose behind the repetition here? I don't believe that there are repetition for no obvious reason, you know, because we read one or two verses before that, that they already say, now say, I would like to suggest a reason for this question and ask you. Notice something that is a little slightly different from the first time and for the second time. In the first time, they say, we will not say, we will do. In the second time, they say, not say, vanishma. There is a significant difference between the first one, not say, asiya, and not say, unishma. My question is, what, what do you think that was the difference between Nasser and Nishma? In a second, I'll tell you what I think about this. But I think there was something that took place when the blood was of them. Okay? There was something spiritual. That was not a theological experience. That was something that happened spiritually to all Bnei Israel. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody say Nasser and Nishma, he goes against his human nature. Think about this. We all say, Nishma, no, tell me what I have to do. And if I like it, then I'm going to do it, right? That's not said. That's our human nature. But here, it is an opposite of a human nature. They didn't evaluate. They didn't, they didn't weigh the cost. Mm -hmm. I like the way uh, uh, Rabbi Ovadia's phone say, say, Nasa, Nishma, because they didn't look for reward. The only time in Jewish history they didn't look for the... Well, they say, you know, like when you get the credit card offers in the mail, they didn't look at the fine print. Say, I'll <laughs> sign and then I'll see what APR percent I'm going to get on the credit card. They didn't weigh it. There is something about covenant that is significant. I believe that Moshe keep on hammering them with the message because he wants them to come to a place that they're willing to risk something. Okay, the question I have for you is, what does it mean for us today as a Messiah? What, what does it mean to us as a Messianic belief? What do, if you should <laughs> come and he died for our sins, what do we risk? Somebody said, where's the risk for us today? We are in heaven. That's the, the Christian motto. Oh, I have the ticket for heaven. I have nothing to risk. Everything is done for me. But that's missing the point of covenant. Yeah. And it's missing the, the meaning, the true meaning, biblical Hebrew meaning of Nishma. Okay. okay. Let's talk about this. Okay. Now say it's just we will do. Nishma is we will do constantly. We will do continuously. 
Like you say, Shamati. Nishma, exactly. Nishma, I hear you. Nishma requires two things in Hebrew. Nishma to hear, and also to be obedient, Mishmat. Mm. Interesting. That's okay. a very interesting. Okay. So it's you know when when you when you tell your son this sweet Noah, okay, take the garbage. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, empty the garbage can, take the trash out. Okay, he can uh, he can do it. Yeah, but if he's a good son, he will do it every time the garbage can is filled up again. You see what I mean? Because he listens. He continuously listens and he's obedient because he knows already, he knows you intimately, and he knows that he, he will make you happy by emptying the garbage continuously, not only once. Uh, are, are, you, are you suggesting that in essence the covenant is trying to take the Bnei Israel from being, I, I hate to use this word, passive, passive believers? to take their faith and make their faith active, in essence? Yeah, not active, but requiring, no. because you need to... Proactive, proactive. Proactive, yes. You need to hear, you need to hear God. Mm -hmm. And this requires sitting and not, not only doing. You can do mitzvot, you can put tzitzit, you can, you know, you can do all this as, as a habit, as a culture, actually. Mm -hmm. Judaism is also a culture today, yeah? And, but, but, but well, how many Jews do hear God's voice and obey? But, but you're saying to me, if it's true, and they are entering a covenantial relationship here, Steve, and they, in essence, covenantial relationship equal becoming proactive in the eyes of God, the question become, I guess, the million-dollar question, what does it mean to us to be proactive with Hashem? Well, to be obedient that, uh, continuously. And I think it's, again, in, 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 in this uh, pasuk. Because... If you take nishma as being just hearing, okay, they've already heard. That's what this I is said. Not, That's exactly this, my and this point. Is the future, it's nishmat, this is looking it's for. Obedient, yeah. mm -hmm. So it is looking much more for obedience and an obedience in, in, in hearing. I think this relates to study. Shema Yisrael. Yeah. Okay, so we're, good, so we're not only going to do it, but we're going to study it. Then we'll figure it out later exactly what it means, and we will be able to draw pearls of Torah from the text, and we're promising to do this. The interesting thing that only after they said it, he sprinkling the blood. Mm -hmm. yep. The note is something, a person, if we use this term of mishmat, which I really love the analogy, so uh, can a person be truly in a covenantial relationship with God, without nishma? That's, I guess, a, a very good, very important question to ask. Because one of the questions people ask us all the time, and I think every believer has to ask himself, am I live, if, if truly God's love language is covenants, that's how God communicates his love, that is his love language. How does a person truly enter into, I, I hate to use this term, quote unquote, but a Mount Sinai experience? If it is, if it, if it, there is no mishmat, that's that's the before there is a covenant it has to be a mishmat. If it, this is God blueprint, I guess that's what I'm suggesting. So the, I, I want to strengthen and challenge even our people today and ask the question: What does it mean? I understand do the mitzvot, but but I, I think what I'm hearing from Rami here is not enough to do the mitzvot. No, any, it's any, much 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 higher can, than just doing. It's doing something on a cognizant level, proactively, and not even to the level because, you know, let's use my example with my son, because I told him to take the trash. You are doing it for a higher covenant, yeah. a higher, higher purpose, which is... So I, I think what we're all saying is that this is sort of a guide, that it was begin here, begin here. Okay. It's not, you know, what, what comes to, do you, do you understand the mitzvah before you do the mitzvah? Do you so, do the mitzvah? So, 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 so here's that. They clearly don't understand everything God given them. Not yet, and that's why the uh, uh, so, mishmat comes in. Uh, but, but, but you see, that's... But it's also like Acts chapter 15. This is also a, a, a connection to Acts chapter 15. We've got goyim coming in, believing in Mashiach, Yeshua of the Jews. What a crazy thing. And they don't know from Torah. So begin here. Begin with these four.
do something. Do do these now. The rest so, will come because Moshe is taught in a synagogue every Shabbat. Yeah, that's in the end of Acts 15. So, so I guess people said all the time, well, the God of the quote-unquote Old Testament is, is a God of judgment and wrath. And then you get to the New Testament, you have this sweet little God, and he's all about grace and love. But if we look at the Torah here, let's admit it, the children of Israel did not, and I'm going to use the Jewish terminology, they had no clue what it means mean to be Torah observant. None, they're no clueless. Idea. Can we admit that? They still, they said, but they don't know what they're talking but about. But I want to add something to it. No. Which will really, you will laugh, I think. No. <laughs> it no. will calm you down. No. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, we need to, to look at the Torah in the bigger picture. Okay. But just before Moses goes to be with God, I mean, yeah, God is going Nebo. to Mount Nebo. What God says, long after, 40 years after this experience, he says, or 38 years at least after this experience, Mount Sinai, he says, the people, your people, will turn their back at me. They will dis be disobedient. What do you think? God needed to go through the wilderness with, the, with his people to understand what, what, that they cannot, that they will not do it? Human nature cannot listen continuously to the voice of God. We, because we are human, because we are, let's admit it, let's humble ourselves, yeah? I mean, that's what God would like us to do. So, so what kind of God, Rega Rami, I have a problem with what you're saying. <laughs> Please. I'll tell you what a problem I have. You are telling me that God is giving us something that his essence is not attainable. Which means, if God's standard, God's standard is not seven ishma, not ten. And that's what he expected. <clears throat> yes, is his standard. Why would it give us something not attainable? And plus it says, and I quote from Devarim, it says, and I'm just going to uh, quote a few ver away. verses. He says, verse 11. The Torah is not in the heavens, the Torah is not over the sea. The mitzvah, yeah. The, 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 the commandment. Mm -hmm. It's not the, he say, it's here, it's right here next to you. So if in one essence you're saying to me, if the Moshe, this is Moses saying in his last in the life, it's not there, it's not here, it's right here. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Nasev and Ishma is the standard, and one cannot do it. How do we reconcile the two? We can, like, like many other things, with God's words. God's words is not mathematically, Greekly. No, Greek no. wisdom, the Greek word yeah. wisdom. God's word is not as clear as we think. And as more we study God's word, as more difficult it is to understand my experience, at least. Just a second, please. So, uh, there is a hint for it. No. In, the, in my humble opinion, the greatest rabbi ever lived on planet Earth is Rabbi Shaul. Okay. And he speaks about this controversy. Controversion or contradiction. It's not yes. quote unquote, yeah? It's not a contradiction. Nothing in God's word is contradiction. But there are things which are difficult for us to understand. Predestination, free will. The two, the two can be married in the Hebraic mindset, which does not require all the time everything to be one and one makes two. Okay? Not everything is so clear. This is belong to the also connect to the chukah. It's right. engraved, you know? You don't need to understand all of God's word. But what you just what bothered you, bothered also Paul in Romans 7. Yes. And in other places where he says, who are you men to tell your creator how, how to make you? You know what I mean? Yeah. And he, he, he deals with it. Okay, God is hardening the, the heart of Pharaoh. And so how can Pharaoh, you know, whoa, 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 why poor Pharaoh? Why he needed to be judged later on in the Red Sea? Yeah. We cannot understand. We need to be humble when we study Torah. Mm -hmm. We That's need to good. humble before, be, be humble and meek before God and say, Abba, I don't understand all of what That's you great. say. That's but great. please forgive me my sins. Let me do the two greatest commandments upon which all your Torah, all this Nasev and Ishma is based. Let me do just those two and please, please show me and speak to me. Keep speaking to me so I can hear with my ear. You but, know what I mean? But, so I can be continuously obedient to you because I cannot understand all. You are a mysterious but God. But you see, Rami, you sound like an Orthodox rabbi now because that's the exact argument an Orthodox rabbi would say about 
about this thing, uh, you would say, well, uh, 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 that's exactly the reason I, I study so much the oral law. Because I want to do the, the Nasa Venishima. I don't want to miss. That's why I studied the oral law. No yeah. problem. There is, it's, it's a matter of attitude, of heart attitude, my friend, Tachi. It's not, I don't think God is <laughs> having a chart, you know, and he checks, okay, Nasser. he did good, tuk, tuk, tuk. He, 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 he helped his wife with sweeping the floor, tick, 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 tick. God is a daddy. God wants us on his lap. God wants relationships, okay? And of course, he wants us to know also before whom we are standing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is, again, there is the contradicting or, or there is the two sides of ah. God. On one thing, he requires something that he knows from the beginning that we are unable to do perfectly. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, he, he already in the context, he gives the blood. He gives mm -hmm. the, the, the chesed. <laughs> I think you are onto something, and I'm going to give you the answer. I was just, that, wait, I was wait. tickling your ear for a moment because I wanted this, because I think the answer is come later, but Steve, you have a word. I've got an answer. Okay, and it, first off, I think you're absolutely correct. The human nature pulls us away from God. Okay, but I also think that God created us in his image that we can overcome our own nature. Amen. We can't, we have the ability. And the reason we know we have the ability to overcome our nature is the presence of Yeshua HaMashiach on this earth. One of his great missions was to show us <clears throat> that we can do it, that we can perfectly follow Torah. We can perfectly follow God, his instructions to us. If he could do it, he came as a man. He was a perfect man, perfect to God here on earth. And if he could do it, I have it in my power to do it. Well, Yeshua says, interesting you said that, he says, have shalom uh, in, uh, in Matitia or Matthew, I believe, 6, he says, have shalom, I have overcome the world. Why did he give us this That's message? That's it. Because if he, if he is the lowly riding upon the donkey, you know, and he overcome the Homer, you can also overcome the Homer. That's the... I, I do agree with you, but I also agree with Rami here that at the end of the day... We have inside of us, by the way, a Yetzer Atov and Yetzer uh -huh. and it's a battle. Yeah. Here is where I think the answer is. Now I'll show you where I think the answer, because we have only five minutes. We've got to conclude a lot of weeks from now. <laughs> Look with us, because I think it's going to be, the answer here found, you know, I think God <laughs> knew. Now I say I agree with you. When they said Naser and Ishma, I believe Hashem look. And he smiled and he I, said, that's what I and think. he says, you're yeah, right. Yeah, really. You're yeah, right. That's why he gave the blood. I think that that's what I is, said. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But here is, is, I agree with you, but I also agree with what Steve says. You know, and Shaul says it this way. Interesting, you mentioned Shaul. He says, now that we found chesed, or you, let's put it in the context of it, now that we found the blood, should we continue to sin? And he says, chas v'chalila, heaven knows, right? Not Romans 6, yeah. But here is where I think the answer is. L let's quickly go to uh, a, a verse. Uh, and I wanted to notice something that is happening here in the text, in the Hebrew. All of a sudden, they experience God. And now they don't call just Bnei Israel. They call Atzilei. Atzil, from the word Atzilei. There is some transformation that took place almost in the spiritual. In the, according to the Hebrew, I sense like there is a linguistic change happening here with the people. They have been transformed. But let's uh, pick... But, a, but certain people, not all the people of Israel. Yeah, yeah, it is The true. 70 and... Yeah, but mm -hmm. you know, those 70... Those 70, I think, is a symbolic. Like, symbolic, because they were afar. We already talked about mm -hmm. it. All of a sudden, now they're coming closer. Let's pick it from verse, verse 11. You want to read it? 11, 11. Ve'el atzilei b'nei Yisrael lo shalach yedo, ve'yechezu et ha'elohim ve'yochlu ve'yishtu. Here is where I think the answer is found. I think in these two verses, one or two verses, you see the entire gospel. And I will recite the gospel this way. I think that the Torah is not over the heaven, it's not over the sea, because we do have a do-over. What I mean by a do-over? I mean... You just invented a new word. <laughs> a okay. do-over. What do I mean yeah. by a do-over? 
it is not but what we know it is by who we know it's the power of association that makes the torah not over the heaven not over the sea the association is with the mashiach and who is here as a mashiach is moshe moshe is a mashiach he is a yeah. prototype of mashiach exactly. that's why you know the word mashiach Ha-Mashiach, it's Ikeel Gevati and Moshe Chai. Why? <laughs> Because Moses, he, what is he doing? He is sprinkling the blood on them, sprinkling the blood, and he said, do over. You want do over? Bam, do over. You know what I mean? You want do over? Bam, do over. Yeah, he is the, but Moshe is not the owner of the do over. He's just the sprinkler of the blood. In the second round, The do-over, Mr. Do-over, the Mashiach, revealed himself to, mm-hmm. to Bnei Israel. When they say here in Hebrew, Vayechezu, I want to talk for a conclusion on this thing, on the word Yechizayon, Lachazot, Chazai. I do not review it when we talk about the word that, knowledge. When you, Vayechezu, Elohim, I believe they got a vision. Yeah, and a vision. They mm-hmm. got, no, they, they, they got God's plan. I'm saying, I got it when somebody show you a plan, mm-hmm. like a master plan, a blueprint for a house. Mm-hmm. And somebody said, like, you know, when uh, Bezalel built, mm-hmm. he got a chizayon, he got a download. It's like you downloaded mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. to your phone or something. Like that. There is a download that took it. And this vision, which become the dot, the knowledge of the mighty one of Israel is what saved them. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it was necessarily the blood. That's why it says in the Torah, in many places, your hands are filled with blood. Yet I did not hear your cry, Isaiah chapter 1. He said, you, you, you have the blood, and I, I hate your blood. Why? Because they didn't have the vision. We must have the blood, but we also have to have the same vision. And it's not our vision. It's we need to Hazur. know, we need to know the one who gave the blood. Who got the one who gave the blood. That's a conclusion. <laughs> yeah. The one who gave the blood. But, you know, some people know. Some people go around the world and say, Oh, I'm saved by the blood of the Messiah. Many people. And I'm not so quick. I'm not God. I'm not a judge. I'm not going to say they're not saved. But if one says, I have the blood of Mashiach, And he doesn't have the vision for the vision of the Father, for the vision of God. He is certainly missing the ultimate purpose behind the blood to begin with. There the is, there the is, blood is the mean. The blood is not the, the, blood is, is the means. Right. It's not the, the blood is the mean, but the, 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 not the, the, cause. End, mm-hmm. the, the end event here is that they, the, they experienced God. It's about the experiencing of God. So here in the Torah portion, there is a real experience that the people... I, I would like to look at these children of Israel as a prophetic picture of you and I. Mm-hmm. You know, we were far from God. Isn't it interesting that they start to fall and it says that the Torah is not over the heaven? The Torah is not... Yeah, the Torah is not over the heaven, Marina, uh, Rami. It's not. Not at all. It's right here. Not because of me. Because somebody brought that down. You know who brought it down? Yeshua brought it down. So yeah, it is not over the heaven. It's not over the sea. Mashiach brought it down to us, you know? And let, so, me, let me add, we started no, with Toshba. We started no, with Torah Shebaal Peh. No. Mashiach brought the real interpretation to the Torah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it says, and I want to conclude with this word. And I cross <clears> from, <throat> not from me, from Kohelet Rabba. A Torah shehanu lemedim ayom nikret hevel. The Torah that we study today will be vanity. And the Rechazar asks, why is it vanity? Because in the day of Mashiach, the Torah we study today will be forgotten. Will be forgotten. So the rabbi asked the question in the Darim Tari. We were talking about this. So there's no value in the five books of Moses? There is a great value. They say it's like a baby in the Darim Tari that is in a womb. <laughs> When he come out, he forgot everything, but he did a practice. The Torah tutors us to Messiah. It tutors us to Messiah. Do we need training wheels? Yes, we need to training wheels. But please understand, most of the things we argue about today will not be argued at when Mashiach comes. We will learn a new halakha, a new way to practice this word of God. And the answer to all of those today, I believe, 
is this. It's simple. If you put your trust in Mashiach, you do not have to wait for the Geula to come. Your Geula can be today. You can have a, a Mount Sinai experience today. <coughs> the Torah can be written on your heart today. You can have a new heart today. And most ex importantly, you can experience God today. And that is... You I, can I, eat and drink before God. Amen. And those are physical things, mm -hmm. which mean that God is not God just in the heavens. Mm -hmm. it's God works here today. And I think, I don't know about you, but that is my desire for all of Israel. Mm. To experience God Amen. today, not Amen. just in the world to come, but today. And only through this process that included the blood, included hearing the word of God and confession. You see all three things, right? It wasn't just the blood. The people had to confess. Those things will all bring to the ultimate revelation. And that's, that's our desire. May this be a Shabbat of revelation upon all of us, upon all of Israel. Amen. And Amen. We thank you, Rabbi Steve. It was so great to have you. It's like we've been, we've been here for an hour and the time just flew. Litraot, call to, we'll see you next time. I hope you've been blessed in this fantastic part of Torah. Shalom.